This is the last video in the SQL Fundamental Series. We'll be working with what we call traditional set operators. These are commands that we use when we work with two or more result sets or two or more the output from two or more SQL statements. The commands we'll look at are union, intersect, and minus. If you want to work along with the video, you'll need your Oracle account. We'll be working with the student teams database and that the script for building that database is provided at the U URL shown here. So let's work with traditional set operators. So the three set operators that we will use in this video are union, intersect, and minus. The union combines two or more data sets. We have an example here of data set A combined with data set B, which gives us a combined data set of A and B. In the union command, if the data sets overlap, the duplicates will be removed. So we see here in this graphic, we have data set A, we have data set B, and they have common data to both data sets. We will see this data once, but not twice, even though it's in both data sets. It's also important to know that whether you're using union, intersect, or minus, you must have union compatible select uh, SQL statements and this means that you must have the same number of columns in both data sets and the column data types must be in the same sequence and be compatible so for example you know column 2 and both data sets must represent the same data type basically and also logically must represent essentially the same data for example last name if I list in column 2 last name in the first data set, but in the second data set I list column 2 as first name, they're both the same data type, but logically they're not the same, and so you would get a result, but it would have uh, a flaw. The intersect command is uh, only going to give you the data where the two data sets overlap. So we see that represented here data set A, data set B, where they overlap, that would be our result. The last is minus. If the data sets overlap, then only the portion not in common with the second data set is in the result. So we have data set A and we have data set B. So we'll see data set A minus any common data with data set B. So let's look at some examples from our students and teams database. We're going to list students who got 90 or higher on their contribute evaluation item. So these students were evaluatees. So here's our SQL statement. We're selecting student ID, first name, last name, eval item ID, and score. We're working with the students table, evaluations, and eval item scores. We join those tables in the WHERE clause. We limit the eval item ID to just those for contribute and scores greater than or equal to 90. And the result we get when we run that is 14. I'm going to uh, run another one, uh, another SQL statement that's almost the same except we will limit this to the eval item score uh, reliable or eval item ID reliable. So when we run this we get an output of 11 rows. So what we've seen here in this slide and the previous slide are the two separate SQL statements. Now I'm going to take those two statements and I'm going to union them. The key difference here is I will remove the semicolon at the end of the first SQL statement. I can't have that there. And I will not have any spacing or blank rows between the two statements. So when I run this, I'm going to actually get an output of 24. So I'm going to switch over to SQL Developer and we'll run these uh, live in SQL Developer and talk about what the results are and why we got them. So I've already pasted in the SQL statements and I'll run the one that gives us the first part of the, the union statement, the one that gives us eval item ID contribute and score greater than or equal to 90. 
and I get a result row count of 14. If I scroll down and do the one just for reliable and run that, then I get 11. If I scroll down and I do the union of those two commands and we see the union command there right here and run that, I'm getting 24. So I started out with 14 and 11, which would be 25. So one row of data is, is uh, disappearing on us, if you will. I'm going to go back up and run just the contribute portion of this. And if we scroll down, what we see here is that Tariq Hashimi has received a score of 98 twice. So two different people evaluated him and gave him a score of 98 for his contribution to the team. So this, these two rows uh, basically become one when we use the union command because they're considered duplicates. So it's not a, an error in any way. Uh, in terms of working with traditional set operators, but it's important to know some of the impact of, of how these commands run. Now I'm going to do a ver or look at a variation on this command because right now, or what we just saw was we had an output of 24. I'm going to eliminate the eval item ID and the score column from the output, and we'll see that when we do that, we'll actually drop down to 11. So let me switch back over to SQL Plus, scroll down to the one that has the union. I'm going to take off the last two fields in both select statements, and then I'm going to run this. And I have 11. So what does that tell us? That means we have 11 distinct students who received 90 or greater with contribute or reliable. When I include the eval item ID and score, if there's any difference in score numbers that a particular student received as an evaluatee, then that student might show up more than once. So the output that we have here actually shows us just the students, not the evaluation item and not the scores, but we have 11 distinct students who have received 90 or above for contribute or for reliable. So now let's do an intersect. So we're going to run the command and add the word intersect or just simply change the word union in my example here. So I'm going to change this to intersect. And then I will run this. And I have an output of 8. So we have 8 students that received both a 90 or greater for contribute and a 90 or greater for reliable. Now when I switch to minus, I'll change the uh, union or the uh, set operator to minus. We will find out how many people got contribute 90 or greater that did not get uh, 90 or greater for reliable. So I'm going to switch back over to SQL and change the intersect to minus and run that query. and I see three. One of the things to keep in mind when you're using minus is that this, the order in which you list the SQL statements makes a difference. The first statement is the one from which you will subtract data in, that comes up in the second statement. So if I flip these, I would get different output most likely. In this last video of the SQL Fundamental Series, we've looked at the set operators. We looked at union, intersect, and minus, and we looked at what the union compatibility rule is.